cleaned up the beehive a little bit with some magic eraser. It's still a little yellow, but hey, it's 45 years old. You'd be yellow too. I'm Mike Dimas, and this is Pinball Shenanigans. I was just about to start a new episode and almost forgot. We must do the new tradition and open up a random page of my new John Chad pinball book. Here we go. Oh, what do we got here? Oh, this is the story of High Speed with Steve Ritchie. I can already tell running down the highway somewhere on Interstate 5 in California. Looking for adventure. What does that say? Vroom, hands gripping the steering wheel. Tires racing. What does it say? Steve Ritchie. Aha, uh -huh, I knew it. Going 140 miles an hour. Pinball designer. Did you know that High Speed was based off of a true story, basically? The story of outrunning the cops and high speed vehicle is that Richie or is that the cop that uh, looks like the cop two coppers in the rear view mirror and there they are wee -oo, wee -oo. oh man we might actually have to turn the page on this one Steve Richie and his 1979 Porsche 928 were finally caught in Lodi, California and charged with going 146 miles an hour. All right, that's all we get on this episode. But this book just gets better and better every time I turn the page. Okay, so in terms of Nugent Pinball, my board repair guy got my boards today. And he sent me an invoice because my boards are already done. He is amazing. By the way, tommy.pinball at gmail.com. That's where you can go to get your boards repaired if you so desire. And again, his name is Brent Butler. So I thought we would take a look and kind of see what he did. I don't have my boards back yet. I just got the invoice, but I probably will have them in the next couple few days. So let's see what it is he did. So this is the MPU. He replaced U8 socket, uh, which is 22 pin, and replaced U8 with a P5101L-3. I wonder if that U8 was one of those AMI chips that I was telling you are garbage from what I heard. Okay, replaced Q5, which is 2N4403 transistor. Replaced a capacitor, C13, just a 0.1 UF50 volt. Okay. Cleaned oxidization from U2 and U6 ROM leads. Oh, interesting. I did not know there was oxidization from U2 and U6. Um, from ROM leads, ROM leads, is that like, what are ROM leads? Is it like ROM legs? Uh, and then installed lithium battery upgrade kit, 100% okay, so pretty sweet on that. And then let's move over to the soundboard, the SDU 100, let's see what he did. Replaced C23, okay, one of the capacitors, uh, 15,000 UF 50 volt. And replace C26, which is 150 UF, 350 volt. I believe there are three capacitors on that board. It looks like only two were in need of being replaced. Um, so we'll have a look at that when we get it. Replaced Q21. Oh, look at this. BUX85G. And Q22 and Q23, which are 2N3439s. Okay. Replaced a resistor here. Looks like a 22K or half watt at R5. And installed grounding modifications. Excellent. Cool. I wasn't sure that I didn't know that there was ground mods for a soundboard. Okay, a lamp driver board. Uh, okay, so it looks like there was two transistors out, Q36 and Q39. And reflowed the connectors. Awesome. Now, oh, son of a 
I said soundboard, that was friggin' the solenoid driver the whole time. So let's go back over. The C23 is the big cap. C26 is a different cap. Uh, okay, so like three different transistors for solenoids and a resistor. Oh, remember that burnt up resistor in the uh, high voltage section? Okay, now let's go to the soundboard where it'll make sense. C4, C53, we're both replaced, two capacitors, and C55. Maybe that's all three of the capacitors, those big ones. Also, C1, C42, and calibrated the tone generators. Excellent. Okay. I wonder what that all means. What did he do to the tone generators? I'm assuming that those are the dials. Just put them to where they're supposed to be. But what are they supposed to be? Um, that is the question. I looked at a video last night. It was Joe's Classic Arcades of a Nugent that he did in 2015. And he was mentioning like, some Nugent sounds are higher pitch, some are lower pitch, depending on how you adjust them. But what is the correct adjustment? What was the initial intention, the initial sound supposed to be? We don't really know. So we'll have to take a look at the boards once I get them in the mail. Also, I sent my flipper rebuild kit order to Kevin, who probably placed his Marco order today. So I've got a flipper rebuild kit coming, a complete set for the bottom flippers. And then the upper flipper, I'm just going to rebuild using the best of all components. So I actually emailed Marco just to clarify, like, what was the correct end of stroke switch for the upper flipper, which is the same as the bottom flippers. And they pointed me in this direction here. Leaf switch, end of stroke, normally closed, and I believe the part number uh, on the Stern manual is this, I believe. Let's go. We can probably find that out right here. Bingo. There's the kit. Here's the diagram. Here's the end of stroke switch, SW294-BL. BL or BR. Oh, bottom left, bottom right. Okay. So SW-294. Uh, there it is. SW-294 and B for bottom, I guess. Uh, but the upper is the same. So I wasn't sure if Kevin had placed the order yet. I was wondering if I should add one of those because I want a new end of stroke switch for all three flippers. But I checked my stash. And look what I found. I'm walking backwards. This looks exactly like what I need. It's not identical, but it lines up uh, to the old end of stroke switch just fine and dandy. So with that and all the other best of parts. And I've got my bin of extra parts too. If I have something that's a little too far gone, I can maybe find something. I've replaced Stern flipper kits before. Is this Stern? What does this say? Miscellaneous Bally flipper parts, okay. But lots of good stuff in here for sure. Anyway, okay, so. Also, I was doing some reading on pin side. I was trying to find out why my speaker was humming because it hums. And it's kind of, I knew it was kind of common for Stern, but I wanted to see if there's anything I could do about it. And I ran into some discussion about transformer voltage. Then I remembered. Uh huh. Remember that? 115 volts marked on that. Why is that 115 volts? It's supposed to be 120. So if you look over here, you'll see this is the setting for 115 slash 120 volts. This is the setting for 220 to 240. So 
Looks like I need a jumper across pins five and seven. And maybe not a jumper across nine and 11. So I think these are those. We can't really see much. I'm assuming it's on that side. Or could it be on the other side? There was a screw, like one of these guys, under this cage that I had to fish out. And this ground strap kind of, it's like, kind of weird, right? Why is there excess there? So it kind of makes me wonder if someone was already in here messing with this. I mean, this is the obvious uh, indicator of that, but... So it's all starting to come together now. So what I'm going to do is remove this cage, take a closer look and see if we're actually on 120 volts or 115. I will be back. Okay, I'm starting to wonder... By the way, I unplugged the machine. I'm starting to wonder if this is not put back the way that it is supposed to be. But I guess... The cage does go that away. I don't know. Look, there is a screw hole here that lines up, but no screw there. A screw hole here that lines up, but no screw in there. And one in that bottom corner, but no hole in the wood. And one in that corner, no hole in the wood. So I'm going to look at a couple of photos just to make sure that this is oriented in the proper position not that it really matters but you can't see the lug numbers on this side so i guess i'm gonna have to remove these couple screws and get access to this side so we can really see what the heck is going on over there because oh wait i can see lug numbers i lied Look at this, two, four. So that means this is gonna be yep, one and three. This is five, six, and nine, 11. So, wait, no, we need five. Hold on a minute. This goes one, three, five, seven, nine, eleven. This goes one, three, five. It's hard to see. Is that a seven? Oh yeah. Five, seven. Okay. So since we don't have a jumper there, and we do have a jumper there, I think we are officially on one fifteen. So I will. Uh, double check my work before I go ahead and perform this operation but I think we found an issue that we can pretty easily resolve okay so it's my first time really I guess it's not my first time messing with transformer lugs because I've high tapped EMs before but this is my first time changing the voltage so I removed the jumper between these two lugs, 9 and 11. Added a jumper between 5 and 7. Then I noticed afterwards you have to also move the yellow wire from lug 9 to lug 5. So solder heavy yellow wire to lug 5. So I believe I am good. I'm still um, a little scared. To turn on the machine though and uh, see what happens but I don't know if I mentioned this did I mention this I think I did mention it but this is all because I got speaker buzz yeah I think I did discuss that maybe just maybe that will help with my buzzy speaker if not maybe my freshly shopped up soundboard will help with the buzzy speaker I mean, this one has three newer caps. Actually, that looks new too. 
So I don't know if doing stuff on the soundboard. Well, there was a lengthy, lengthy discussion about different things that could cause speaker buzz. And a lot of it was really well beyond my comprehension level. They were talking some serious electronics lingo. But anyway, before I turn this on, I am going to just pray and hope and wish and maybe just quadruple check before I power it on. But I think we should be good. So I'll report back. All right, I'm back from last night's shenanigans. I was too scared to turn on this machine. I posted on a pinball repair help group, hey, does this look good? And I found out that what I did was essentially low tapped the machine. You know, on old EMs, high tap, low tap, I have, to, I have high tapped machines many a time. And I guess the 115 volt to 120 volt was effectively low tapping the machine. So that's dumb. Now I have to undo my, what I did. And I still haven't turned on the machine yet because I'm still scared. But we're going to do it anyway because I didn't go through all this trouble to not turn on the machine and just at least see what happens. Here we go. Everything good? Everything good? No fuses blowing. Okay, boot it up. And speaker's still a little whiny, so it didn't make any difference in that regard. But at least I learned a new lesson about the solid state high tap versus low tap. So I guess we're going back to 115 volts. Oh yeah, shout out to Mitch Ayers, my buddy who commented on my repair group thread that he leaves him at 115 for that very reason. Get a little extra punch out of your solenoids. And if you sell the machine to a customer and they have low line voltage, then it's not an issue as much as it would be if you had it set to 120. So time to undo all of that and start over again. So I thought I'd throw on final round pinball podcast on the pinball network as I worked away on undoing my transformer jumpers. And what do you know? Albert Agar, Orbital Albert, my buddy, Pinball Nerds Podcast, is their guest for this episode. So that's pretty freaking sweet. Check them out. That's uh, the Jeff Teolis and Marty Robbins. And uh, yeah, so I undid my work, as you can see, and uh, vacuumed out little bits of wire and everything, uh, including the two screws that attach my cage to the back box. So... I need to find a couple more screws, but that's back to where it was and time to move on to something else. Maybe pop bumpers next. We'll see. All right. I got a little sidetracked. I'm going to uh, clean up and refurbish the shooter plunger rod. It'll be getting a new barrel spring. That one's a little compressed for its hundred thousand plunges there we go that's all cleaned up cleaned up the beehive a little bit with some magic eraser it's still a little yellow but hey it's 45 years old you'd be yellow too and new barrel spring cleaned up all the other parts new shooter tip and it's a little more springy than it was before it was kind of just donk before so that's done Okay, I got thinking about the flippers. There's two coils that are 25-534- uh, Wait, what's this? Oh, that's actually what's on there. 25-534-50-50. I didn't realize Bally had the same specs. I thought that was more of a stern thing. What does this say? 25, 450. Oh, that's different altogether. Okay, anyway. Bottom line is this. The coils in the machine 
One is correct, two are slightly off. But I got thinking that the numbers that are off are actually the hold windings. So when the flipper's up, you're holding the ball, holding the flipper up, that is your 50-50, 5,050 windings. So what is in there now is like, what is it again? It's less windings. It's um, 4,500 windings. So less windings means more strength. So all that means is that when you're holding your flipper up, it's just going to be a little bit stronger. And as a matter of fact, if your ball is coming down hard down the play field and you flip your flipper, it might actually prevent the flipper from kind of like sagging down a little bit. So I think I'm going to, even though I found a correct coil, and I cleared out the lugs, which may or may not have been helpful. And I tested the ohms, and it is good. Threw a sleeve in there, it fits fine. Uh, I decided I think I'm just going to keep the uh, bally flippers that are in there, or quality coils, or one of each, or whatever it is, because it just means the hold power will be slightly stronger. So, I'm not going to bother with that. I think I. Um, just kind of avoiding pop bumpers because they're not my favorite thing to do and I keep getting sidetracked, but now it's time to actually get to them. All right, so fun with pop bumpers. I've got the bracket all disassembled. I got to clean up this coil. And then the two-part process, you got to kind of take apart and clean the spoon and make sure it's not broken and uh, adjust it and... I'll remove the switch, clean the bottom of the pop bumper skirt, and all the routine. I've done a million pop bumpers before. Recently on Whirlwind, there was six of them, but look at this. I mean, we got a broken metal yoke. We got the original coil sleeve where the flange is broken off. The Bakelite. A part is worn on the one side, but you can often flip them. I'm going to do that. Clean up all this 40-year-old crud. But, uh, yeah, definitely is needed. All right, isn't that a lot better? I ended up going with a new one of these guys, new one of these guys, new one of these guys. Cleaned up everything else. Didn't even need to remove the coil stop, which is nice because there's nuts in the bottom. Um, so there's that. And then cleaned up the coil and the spoon. It was pretty black, but it's not broken. Clean the switch. Cleaned the skirt. And now I shall reassemble. All right, pop bumper number one is complete. I am um, sure to adjust it so that it is going to be nice and snappy and register with every angle of the ball. So I won't bore you, but I'll just rinse and repeat that a couple more times. And be done with the pop bumpers. Oh, yeah. Okay, this one video is taking three different days to record. Oh, look at this. My spring looks a little bit broken on this. I'm working on the last pop bumper. And then I'm going to wrap up this video once and for all. But that spring, I might have to uh, find a better one of those. It's going to get a new sleeve. And all three pop bumpers are getting new Bakelite, um, whatchamacallums. So, getting close to the finish line on Operation Pop Bumpers. Alright, side note. Pinball at the Zoo is happening this weekend. I have a little bit of FOMO. I kind of wasn't really paying attention to the tournament schedule and would have maybe went there. But, I actually am going to a tournament tomorrow at Maple Pinball, so I will get my tournament fix then. Anyway. Oh, on a, also a side note, I was listening to Triple Drain Podcast, so I want to give those guys a shout out. Uh, also another TPN 
uh, podcast and uh, love listening to those guys. Uh, lots of good stuff. Um, lots of bad stuff is this. Check out. Look at the amount of wear on these. Uh, what are they called again? Um, I just had the name and it left me. They are um, yolks. Yes. Fiber yolks. That's what it is. Okay. So I replaced all fiber yolks, one metal yolk, all three sle um, sleeves. There's no K in the word sleeves. And you can see two of the sleeves had the uh, little um, flange. Man, there's a lot of terminology in pinball. But both flanges, two of the three flanges broke off. One spring was kind of crappy, so that's all the stuff that got replaced. There's some of the replacement stuff. And there's my pop bumper parts. Anyway, I think I can finally wrap up this video. There we go. All three pop bumpers are in happy land with their new parts. Everything cleaned. The spoons, the switches, they're adjusted um, so that they should be nice and responsive. Next thing to do is, um, oh, look at this. There we go. Well, I found uh, some more to do. Good thing I found that. Um, but that's going to be the end of this video. Uh, I'm going to, uh, after this, I'm going to clean the glass and Ray's going to come by. We'll put some test games on this and even some test games on Whitewater because it reset on me the other day. And I've got an offer to trade this for a... Avengers Infinity Quest Premium. And this is not even for sale. He just saw it in my videos and asked me. And I said, well, you can make an offer, but uh, probably not happening. It's a pretty tempting offer, though. Infinity Quest Premium for Whitewater. Um, so we'll see. We're going to play test it. Just make sure it's even working before I can even contemplate that decision. Play test some Nugent and play test some of this. Thanks for watching.